Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, this week's episode of Espresso Shot, an offshoot of our Coffee Break series. And today we're going to dive right into that mailbag, Kevin. And uh, I got this recent question. It was regarding using qualified money. Now, advisors out there, I think, hopefully, mostly know that, yes, we can use qualified money, clients' qualified money, uh, to fund our asset care, which is our whole life chassis, long-term care insurance solution for their clients. But the question, Kevin, was, can they also use qualified money to fund our annuity care, long-term care options? So uh, you want to tackle that one, big guy? Sure, it's, it's, it's a good one. Uh, the answer is simple, yes. Right. But there's a little bit to it. We can use qualified money to fund the base policy portion of annuity care only. Can't fund the continuation of benefit rider that way. Uh, and it would can only be used with annuity care one or index annuity care. Annuity care two doesn't work. So one, annuity care one or index annuity care. Base only is funded with qualified money, which means if you're paying for the continuation of benefit rider, that has to come from another source, be it out of pocket or maybe even creating another strategy, putting money into a SPIA and having it lead to fund that, that continuation of benefit right. Now, here's something that's really important to recognize. If all the base is funded with qualified money, then all of that distribution when made for long-term care will be taxed as ordinary income. So whatever the tax rate is, is a tax rate. That being said, with annuity care one, you have 36 months of distribution coming out of your qualified money. With the index product, it's going to be a little different depending on an individual or a joint contract, but long and the short of it is that base portion is going to be considered income. Now think about this. You add that continuation of benefit rider, that's your long-term care benefit. We can double your pool with index annuity care. We could triple your pool of money or in both instances, potentially go lifetime. That base is taxable. That continuation of benefit is tax free. Here's the thought I want to leave you with. If you're using this strategy, effectively you're self-funding a portion using qualified money, then using tax qualified HIPAA eligible PPA language, continuation of benefit rider, for tax-free long-term care. So yes, qualified money can be used. Typically, I wouldn't advise it, but if you have a health challenge, this may be the best way to go. That's what I got, Michael. So next week, for everyone, another LTC Coffee Break, mm -hmm. 10 a.m., we drop a new one. And thank you for joining us. Michael, I'm throwing it to you because I know I forgot something. I <laughs> know, you did a great job, Kev, as always. Uh, just remember, Kevin and I are out there and uh, we are doing some traveling. So if there's interest, please let us know. If you're not back in the office yet, happy to meet you for some uh, uh, breakfast or lunch and just discuss whatever it is and however we can support you. Again, every Tuesday, uh, we'll have another episode. So go to that ltccoffeebreak.com link and uh, we hope to be talking to you soon. Thanks for tuning in.